Today we're going to be talking about trail cameras. Anything and everything related to them and how they hurt people more than they help people sometimes. So how many trail cameras you got out right now, Eason? Five. Five? I think we got probably around there. I have Some three. of these guys... Do you have three? I have three out. Some of these guys are like, oh, okay, I got 30 cams. I'm like, yeah. how do you afford 30 yeah. trail cameras? I don't have 30 trees to put a camera on. They must be pro on staff. Somebody's property. Yeah, <laughs> probably pro staff forever yeah. who got those cameras. Seems like... They get 10% off. <laughs> a whole 10%. I, I try to buy at least one camera every year to add to the collection. Yeah, and every single year, one breaks. it's like I still have five. <laughs> like, no matter what I do, I have five. I cannot... I can't win with these stupid things. I actually did just send two back for replacement, so nice. I'll be up to seven. Nice. So, yeah. I uh, I don't know that I've bought. I think the last one we got, we well, got those coverts. We were gifted yeah, the a Mossy Oak cam, Gamekeeper but, ones. Yeah, from eBay. Yeah, they're there's, like sixty bucks. I think that's probably a good place to start. <clears throat> there's so many. There's so many brand. It's kind of like. Uh, it's almost like bow brands like any it's more, definitely worse than bow brands <laughs> well I, what i mean is any more like any new bow it's, it's like it's pretty solid broad it's like heads. turkey call broad brands heads. there you go yeah there's just so many and most of the ones out there are they're gonna take pictures you're gonna be fine and yeah. almost but, all of them are made in china by the same manufacturing company they have a different plastic outside so they look different exodus they're all american made aren't they some of them are but yeah. a lot of them are overseas what i've realized is you find one that does the job mm -hmm. doesn't have to be some you know Stick crazy thing and stay with it bread and butter eventually you're gonna get curious and try something else and realize yeah it ain't happening. it's not well, the I, one you know. i did that last year i we've been running covert cameras for how many years years a decade and last year I tried a stealth camera and I had it out for two weeks and yep. it didn't take a single yeah. picture. Yep. A stealth cam, the the big name brand, you know? Yep. Yeah. And it didn't work for me. I've that doesn't it. mean that other people don't, but. Like, right. Yeah, some people rave about them. I, I've had a lot of luck with the Bushnell Essential cameras. Those things, yeah, just tried and affordable true. Affordable too. So yeah, the Yeah, right at the, like the $90 price right. point. So pretty much right at the middle of the pack, but yeah. they take pictures, they take great videos and for sure. That's what I want. So. so if you're looking for our opinion, we've been running trail cameras forever. Bushnell and Coverts, we've had some pretty good luck with. We've tried Muddy. We've tried Maltree. Maltrees were pretty solid. I don't know anymore. We don't really have any new Maltrees. I have a couple basic. They're the A20s. They take pictures. And yeah. They take pictures, which is what I want them for. Yeah. So those do okay. Spy Points are actually the two I sent back. They ran well for about a year. And then they kind of both took a crap about the same time. And I had trouble getting them to accept them for a return on warranty. It has a two-year warranty. They crapped out about one year. And my warranty runs out next week. And I just this week got them to accept wow. a return. Nice. So, And I've been trying for the past year to get them to accept them. What's the one that we tried several years ago that exploded? Was it a Wild Game Innovations? Oh, yeah. It fried. Was. Yeah. <laughs> fried. Yeah. Well, my my buddy had one, and he plugged it in because he had a battery pack like to charge it, and he plugged it in. It literally exploded in his house. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. But enough of the fluff about trail cameras. That's just our opinions. We want to talk about right now. I think, and this just dawned on me this year. Um, I think trail cameras. I mean, they're. I mean, oh my gosh. Yeah, pretty much, if you hunt, you have a trail camera. I feel like, but I think a lot of times they do more harm than good. And I, I was listening to the working class bow hunter. They had Mark Dury on, and this is where I really started thinking about it. Um, well, let's let's hold up here for a minute too. We're not saying that trail cameras, in and of themselves, are bad. What they it's make you us. do, what yeah. they make you <laughs> do us. as a hunter, is yep. bad. Yeah. Well, because our natural, it's uh, you hear people describe all the time, it's like Christmas morning it when is. you're checking your cameras, and it is. It's the most exciting thing. I'm out there frolicking through these yeah. fields, just like <laughs> glowing, drooling, <laughs> yeah. knowing that I'm going to check a camera that hopefully has 2,000 pictures on it. And it's dead. The <laughs> only time Eason ever does is shed walk that's not shed season is when he's checking <laughs> well, his trail, walking cameras. To a trail yeah. camera. You lock eyes with it from like 300 yards away. You better add the shed walk here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how it's done. The eyes, right there. That's how that's done. 
and then the walk, you got to get the spring and the step. So you really got to, right there, you got to have the passion behind the steps. Anyway, um, yeah, it's what it, what it makes us do. So you're right. obviously, this time of year, everyone has their cameras out, um, which I think isn't necessarily unnecessary but i don't know that it really matters a whole lot i really don't think you're gonna pattern a deer in inventory. june yeah more so more or less to know what deer are on your farm but a lot of guys are going in every saturday boom check that camera every saturday boom check that camera Some every people saturday even more yeah and maybe maybe that's fine but i i gotta think that's conditioning those deer i mean it has to be how is it not they yeah have... and even with the inventory like you're trying to figure out what's in your area but like you said that may not even be what is going to be in your area come right. September 26th or whatever it is. Like, right. Which I get it. Like, you're seeing these big bucks in bean fields, even if they're not going to be there. Yeah. You want that close up, yeah. awesome picture. So I get yeah. it. For sure. But, and I think We're guilty of it. Everything's situational, too. Like, not every entry and exit right. is right. just as harmful as the next. Some right. might be minimally invasive, as like driving yeah. a tractor up along a, a yeah. bean field yep. or something. Pop, pop, pop it, hard no out. idea. That's, there's, you know, that's minimally invasive. Right. There's definitely multiple layers. Yeah. If it, like that camera we were talking about that we really want to check, I've left it go for probably three, three weeks, but I could literally drive my truck up to it and the farmer's back there every day. So that one, I probably could check it at any time. Yeah. But yeah, some of these guys that go deep into, you know, these thickets and nasty stuff this time of year and they're checking these cameras and they're dumping out minerals and corn and every. I just, I wonder, and again, I don't know for sure, but listening to that podcast, I was like, man, that's probably, you think you're patterning this deer, but you're probably just ruining your season for that deer. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to COVID. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but. Well, not even, not even just that though, but think about how many times you do go and check your trail cameras and you do have a giant deer on it and it's at 1 30 in the morning and then you invest your entire season chasing that deer which you only had three pictures of at 1 30 in the morning in july over a bean field that's not there anymore when you're actually hunting and your whole season is based literally around something that's damn near impossible <laughs> like you're setting yourself up for failure. And when you do that, you get discouraged. And you're like, I don't know why there's no deer here. And then you start bouncing around and checking other properties yep. if you have them. Yeah, I almost feel like before we ran trail cameras back in the day. We had a lot more success. I, I, well, I feel like it was more exciting because it's like, man, I don't know what's here. Now it's like, I got this deer I could see. I got this deer I could see. Well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and then when you there. don't see them, that's when the disappointment comes yeah. in. So instead of having Christmas morning when you check your card... Before, we had Christmas morning almost every time we hunted. Because you never knew, yeah. Yep. Yeah, almost all the deer we've killed over the last, except for my studs that I've killed the last two years. <laughs> every, like, your guys' bucks the last few years, we've all had pictures of and knew about. Which yeah. is, is awesome and really cool, but it does take a little bit of the excitement out of it. But we didn't have pictures of them in July, at least for mine. Right. The first picture we had of mine was at the beginning of, end of October, right? Yeah. So well, like, that's where trail cameras are good, I think, because if you're using them correctly or if you're using cell cameras, you really can slip in during the season and kill a deer because of your cameras. But right now, I don't know that it really correlates a whole lot with the hunting you're going to be doing in July, not a whole lot. June, July. It's more so for, hey, this deer's in the area, then once, you know, November rolls around, you can maybe try to figure them out. Well, I, I think this is... Sorry to interrupt you, but no, I think this ahead. is this is a, a worthwhile thing to mention is that you you called it inventorying right. bucks yeah. over bean fields on properties that you can hunt. And around here, what's the largest property that we can hunt? Eighty acres? Yeah. Hundred yeah. Hundred acres. Couple hundred and go the, a little further south. The odds that the buck you see on that eighty acre parcel in that bean field is still going to be there in November is not nearly as high mm -hmm. as the guy like uh, Bill Winky that has several hundred acres, if not more than that, and he can monitor literally every deer because he knows they never leave the boundary lines of his property. It's so, totally different inventorying a deer in that scenario than it is here where you're hunting the back 40. Like the inventory on a back 40 doesn't mean a whole lot because they're not necessarily going to be there. You might be inventorying things that you'll never actually see. 
Yeah. I don't know if I fall into the, the, you know, not running trail cameras would keep that element of surprise up. I think running trail cameras is what keeps me in the woods sometimes because I'm you not, know it's there. I'm not seeing deer when I'm hunting. And like, if it weren't for that trail cam picture, I would be That's so true. discouraged mm -hmm. that I wouldn't even want to go. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to see anything. Yeah. At least when you know, I've had pictures in the past couple weeks. That's kind of what keeps me hunting. That's sometimes. true. You it yeah. go, it, it could yeah. go either way. It really. Could. Yeah. Well, and it, there is a sense of satisfaction when you kill a deer that you've had pictures of. That's kind of a cool, yeah. you know, story, if you will. But, okay, let's get to the core of this. What's the point of running trail cameras in June? What's the, what's the, what's the actual point of running a trail camera in June? Is it person, personal satisfaction? What is it? A for hobby? The main, for the manufacturers Just to make hobby? money? No, seriously, what is it? What's the point? I'm guilty of putting them out too soon, too. I mean, June, especially early June... You don't even know what they're going to... You can't tell what right. they're going to be exactly. Yeah, I mean, if they have big bases, you know it's going to yeah. be a big buck. I don't really think until, like, July is when you can really yeah. start to tell. They're kind of right out now, past the years a little bit. You get an idea what the frame is Especially like. Especially right now, end of July. Yeah. yeah. You have a really good idea of exactly what that deer is going to be. But I'd just be curious to hear people's answers because, like, you get on social media right now. Everybody and their brother is posting checking trail cameras, and it's like... I don't know. I mean, that became, I think, really trendy because of social media. And we do it, too. I, like we just said, we have cameras out. So we're not saying don't do this. We're doing it. But when you sit, take a step back, it's like, what What are we really doing it for? You know? I, I don't know. I think it's a weird... I think it's kind of weird that Is we it do it. one of those things that where you're you're a sheep in a herd and you do know. it because everyone else is doing it i don't know and like you had mentioned before that you do it because if you don't you feel like you're behind okay so have we between the three of us have we killed any deer because of the trail cam pictures we got of it in july yours one behind the house that's all that's the only one i can think of and he just was a homebody and i don't know he stayed on. The, he he was one of the few that stayed on his summer pattern. Well, yeah, but he stayed on his weeks. summer. Yeah, for the first couple of weeks, right. he didn't stay on that summer pattern into November. It was right. the beginning of October. So you may, I'd say, the odds aren't great, but you may have that one buck that just is a homebody, and you kill the first couple of weeks of season that was doing the same things your camera was saying he was well, doing. And we should mention this too. This is totally different in states where you can hunt the beginning of the September because the beans are still on. Yeah, and we you can hunt over yeah. green beans. We in Ohio, the you can. Last week of September. Most of the beans are either turned, turning, or picked. Yeah, you don't have green bean fields at the beginning mm. of of our season it seems like every year you have that nice buck all the way up until the start of the season like almost every day yeah and you get like super like the excited week before it switches even that giant one we hunted a couple years ago like yeah. he was there every day yep. almost multiple times yeah and a couple times per day boom. and it seems like ohio places their season right when those they go from that summer pattern and start to switch to that fall pattern. And really, like, a lot of them we've noticed when they shed that velvet, gone. Yeah. yeah. Gone. Yep. Absolutely. That's why I just, I when I heard Mark Drury talking about it, I was like, man, that's kind of a funny, it's kind of a funny thing to think about. Like, everyone is running cameras right now, including us. For the people who who aren't familiar, we'll put, we'll put a link to that podcast in our description. But do you have a quote? That you could think uh, of, that you could paraphrase I about honestly, what he's saying. They talked about all kinds of stuff, but the, the part, and you listened to it too. The part right. I was talking about is he, he, I think he talked about he leaves his cameras for, I want to say 30 days, like a month basically, and like he doesn't, especially this time of year, like he does not want to be in there at all. And it just made me think, like, man, are we screwing up? Like we, in our minds, we've convinced ourselves that we're getting intel and we're learning these bucks and we're scouting. But is that a lie? Are we lying to ourselves? You know, because more times than not, this, the information you're gaining off of this five-year-old buck in July has really not that much correlation to what's going to happen when you kill him, if you do kill him, other than that he's in that area. Yeah. That's my opinion. What does it give you to know what he's doing this week to help you kill him as opposed to checking your card a week before the season when you can compile... Two months worth of data. Yeah. 
before you like right before you can start right. hunting as I, I mean if i know it this week what's that do exactly yeah. what does it do for if anything good point. if anything this is a sales pitch for cell cameras because then you still get the pictures yeah. but you don't have to go in there yeah we talked about the budget cameras like most of the trail cameras that we run are less than 100 bucks so that's a that's what i would consider a budget trail camera yeah and in my opinion if you're going to spend a hundred dollars or more save it and spend 300 and get a cell camera yeah <laughs> probably i've been super like pressured lately to get a cell cam because the more i think about it if i have a deer showing up multiple days in a row during season when i can kill it i go in and check that camera and he was there for four days straight last week mm -hmm. that does nothing for me yep. especially and, for you because of your situation and how far you are from some of the properties right. that you hunt that would make a big difference yeah and i've thought about it like i've had that multiple times where you have a deer showing up consecutive days and if you knew that mm -hmm. you could jump in there and hopefully get him while he's still doing that yeah. day to day to day whereas without cell cams there's a lot of opportunities i feel like i miss yeah it's a good point or you'll get a cell camera and you'll think that's what's going to happen. Instead, you'll just be sorely disappointed because you'll be getting these pictures. Instead of be like, yeah, I need to get in there. Be like, oh, there's another little one. Oh, there's another doe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There he is. Oh, wait, I got to work. Tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, wait, never mind. So yeah. I guess, are we about ready to wrap up? I think so. The moral I of this trail camera story is that tr we're not knocking trail cameras. They're a great Love tool them. to use. We use them ourselves all the time. But... You can strategize a little bit with how you use them and don't let your trail cameras dictate every single move you make, especially in the summer. Yeah, especially the summer. During season, you hang a camera, you check it, you notice a pattern, get in there as soon as you can. Well, and if you're, let's say but, you're going to walk past a camera to go and hunt somewhere, you might as well pull the card and just check it because you're already walk. walking past it as it is. But don't necessarily go out of your way because... Yeah could be detrimental at, at times. And maybe some of you guys have had similar thoughts. Like I said, this just dawned on me last week when I listened to this, or maybe it was even this past weekend. But if you guys have similar opinions or you completely disagree with us and you like, you guys suck at hunting and you <laughs> suck at using trail cameras and I totally every single year kill the buck that I saw in June because of that trail cam picture, let us know. We'd love to hear it. <laughs> Should we do like Joe Rogan? Three, two, one. And we're live. Is it in focus? <laughs>